Chapter 1, Preliminary Points Part 1, The Writer of the Apocalypse is the Apostle John This view is amply sustained by primitive testimony. Justin Martyr, who was born about seven years after the banishment of the Apostle John to Patmos, in his dialogue with Trypho, thus refers to the author of the Apocalypse. A man from among us, by name John, one of the apostles of Christ, in the revelation made to him, has prophesied that the believers in our Christ shall live a thousand years in Jerusalem. Irenaeus, who wrote about 30 years later than Justin Martyr, speaks of the Apocalypse as the work of John, the disciple of the Lord, that same John that leaned on his breast at the Last Supper, Origen, who made the canon of the New Testament a subject of special inquiry, attributes the authorship of the Apocalypse to the Apostle John, who leaned on Jesus' bosom, who wrote a gospel and said that the world itself could not contain the books which tell of the Lord's acts. He wrote the Apocalypse also. Herod slew James, the brother of John, with the sword, and the king of the Romans, as tradition teaches, condemned John, bearing witness for the word of the truth, to the island of Patmos. And John informs us of the things concerning this witness of his, not telling who condemned him, but saying in the Apocalypse, I, John, was in the isle that is called Patmos. Chapter 1, verse 9. And he appears to have seen the revelation in the island. The writings of the Apostle John relate to the past, the present, and the future of the time in which he lived. He wrote a gospel concerning the person of Christ, epistles concerning his church, and an apocalypse concerning his kingdom. No other writer in the New Testament is of equal range, or more profound or Christ-like. Part 2 the date of the Apocalypse is that of the banishment of the Apostle John under the Roman Emperor Domitian toward the close of the first century. The testimony of Irenaeus, who was Polycarp's disciple, who was himself the disciple of the Apostle John, is of special importance on this point. Speaking of the number of the beast in the Apocalypse, he says, For it, the Apocalypse, was seen no very long time ago, but almost in our age, towards the end of the reign of Domitian. Eusebius, H.E. 3.18, Tertullian, Clement of Alexandria, Hippolytus, and others of the early fathers confirm this testimony. Victorinus, who wrote a commentary on the Apocalypse towards the close of the 3rd century, says twice over that the visions of the Apocalypse were seen by the Apostle John in the Isle of Patmos, when banished thither by the Roman Emperor Domitian. The commentary of Victorinus is the earliest on the Apocalypse extant. Referring to the passage in Revelation 10.11, he writes, Thou must again prophesy to the peoples, and to the tongues, and to the nations, and to many kings. He says this because, when John said these things, he was in the Isle of Patmos, condemned to the labor of the mines by Caesar Domitian. There, therefore, he saw the Apocalypse, and when at length grown old, he thought that he should receive his quittance by suffering, Domitian being killed, all his judgments were discharged. And John, being dismissed from the mines, thus subsequently delivered the same apocalypse which he had received from God. The external evidence as to the Domitian date of the apocalypse is clear and certain. From the first witness who speaks upon the point in the latter half of the second century down to the first half of the fifth, we have a succession of fathers bearing testimony with one accord and in language which admits of no misunderstanding to the fact that St. John was banished to Patmos under the reign of Domitian and that there he beheld these visions of the apocalypse which he afterwards committed to writing. These fathers, too, are men of ability, learning, and critical insight into the history of bygone times. They belong to the most different and widespread regions of the church, to Gaul, Alexandria, the proconsular province of North Africa, Pannonia, Syria, and Rome. 
They are thus in a great degree independent of each other, and they convey to us the incontestable impression that for at least the first four centuries of the Christian era, and over the whole extent of the Christian church, it was firmly believed that St. John had beheld the visions of the Apocalypse in the days of Domitian, and not of Nero. The date thus assigned by primitive testimony to the Apocalypse is towards the end of A.D. 95, or the beginning of A.D. 96. The varied historical evidence which has been inquired into, says Eliot, all concurs to confirm the date originally and expressly assigned by Irenaeus to the Apocalypse, as seen and written at the close of the reign of Domitian, that is, near the end of the year 95 or beginning of 96. Accordingly, the great majority of the most approved ecclesiastical historians and biblical critics, alike Roman Catholic and Protestant, French, German, and English, writers who have had no bias on the point in question, one way or the other, from any particular cherished theory of apocalyptic interpretation. For example, Dupin, Bossuet, Tillamont, Leclerc, Turretin, Spanheim, Bassnage, Lamp, Mossheim, Mill, Whitby, Lardner, Milner, Tomlin, Burton, etc., etc., alike have adopted it, to whom I am happy to add the living names of the German ecclesiastical historian Geisler and of our own learned chronologist, Mr. Clinton. We may, I am persuaded, depend on its correctness with an unhesitating and implicit confidence as on the truth of almost any of the lesser facts recorded in history. And I must say, it seems to me most surprising that respectable and learned commentators should have spent their time and labor in building up apocalyptic expositions that rest wholly and only on the sandy foundation of an earlier neuronic date. Eliot, Hori Apocalypticae, Volume 1, pages 45 and 46. Part 3. The theme of the Apocalypse is defined in its opening verses. The subject of the Apocalypse, according to its inspired definition, is things which must shortly come to pass. The Apocalypse is not a book of history or of doctrine, but of prophecy. To this, its larger part is devoted. It treats of things which were future at the date of their revelation and of things whose accomplishment was shortly to come to pass. Their chronological position did not lie in remote futurity. The time of their fulfillment was in the first century at hand, chapter 1, verse 3. This idea of the speedy accomplishment of its predictions is again and again referred to throughout the prophecy and appears at its close in the sentence, The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Chapter 22, verse 6. The Apocalypse is a revelation not of remote events in which the Christian church from apostolic days onward to the present time has had no practical interest, but of events which 1800 years ago were near at hand as to the commencement of their accomplishment. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand.